And now to a story that we are not making up just to make you feel better. A new study showing TV is healthy for you. Two economists found Sesame Street provides more than entertainment value for young children. Philip Levine of Wellesley College and Melissa Kearney of the University of Maryland find that the show is the largest and least costly early childhood intervention in this country. The study found preschool age children who watched the show when it first aired in 1969 experienced improved educational outcomes. The children were more likely to be at the grade level appropriate for their age. That's all based on census data. And the authors note that this trend was most pronounced among certain groups, including boys and black youth. The impact was even more significant for children located in economically disadvantaged areas. The authors estimate that the show's impact comes at a cost of about $5 per child in today's dollars. And we are joined now by Melissa Kearney, economics professor at the University of Maryland, who co-authored the study. She's also a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution. Good evening. Good evening. What did you find? Well, I think you did a nice job summarizing it. We find that for that first generation of children who were preschool age when Sesame Street was introduced in 1969, when they got to school, they were better prepared. They were less likely, substantially less likely, to fall behind a grade. Um, the effect, as you said, was most pronounced for boys, African Americans, and kids from economically disadvantaged areas. It's noteworthy that this was precisely the goal of the creators of Sesame Street. So in a large sense, our findings suggest that they accomplished their goal. How did you control to make sure you were isolating the right factor, that is, that you knew it was Sesame Street that was doing this and not something else? Right, thank you for that question. So what we did was we took advantage of technological limitations in broadcast at that time. So when Sesame Street came on the air in 1969, people received uh, their programming either through a UHF channel or a VHF channel. And VHF was a, a more reliable um, broadcast. And so for kids who were growing up in cities where through no fault of their own, Sesame Street just happened to be broadcast on UHF stations, they were much less likely to be able to receive that broadcast signal in their homes. So for example, kids who grew up in LA or DC or Ohio at the time had a very, very limited access to the show as compared to kids who were living in New York City or Boston um, or Chicago. There almost every kid could receive Sesame Street. And so that's great for us as researchers because it sets up this comparison group of kids who, again, through no choice of their, their parents, um, right. they just didn't have access to the show. And so what do you think parents and policymakers should take from this? I think that this is a really encouraging finding, and it suggests that Sesame Street and perhaps television or electronic content more broadly can be leveraged for real uh, mm -hmm. social good. It can really help uh, prepare kids academically for school. This is, you know, inexpensive and a great thing for us to scale up. I hope you can do follow-up work on whether Cookie Monster uh, really makes kids more into cookies because he was so <laughs> obsessed with them when you're little it almost gets you more excited for dessert. Melissa Kearney. And now he says they're a sometime snack. <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight.